Welcome to Systems Are Go for late August and September. My name is Eric McLaughlin. I'm the astronomer for the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory, and this month's data has some really interesting features. Of course, in each night's time lapse, when the skies are clear, you can see quite a few stars, but you can also see a good number of planets. In the early evenings, you'll notice Jupiter and Saturn paired nicely together. As they head towards the horizon, Mars will be coming up on the other side of the sky, and just before sunrise, you'll see a bright light rising, which is actually Venus. There will be actually a number of nights where these skies will be not so clear, and that is due to actually the effects of the wildfires here in California, Oregon, and Washington. Those fires put a lot of particulate matter up into our atmosphere, which is readily apparent in these images. Of course, you would expect that if you've been looking at the sky or even just been outside over the past month, you'd expect some nights to have been impacted as well. And indeed, if we had stargazing events on site in this time frame, we would have had to cancel them because those kinds of conditions aren't just bad for viewing, they're actually bad for telescopes, which we'll come back to later as our solar telescope will not have been able to image on some of those days, not just because the sky didn't look good, but because we don't want to actually have the telescope out in conditions that might have ash and other things falling on the optics of the telescopes. In any case, I'll let you enjoy these time-lapse images of our night sky, and I'll touch base with you a bit later as we have a detection with our Global Fireball Observatory camera.
at around 8.30 or so on the evening of the 9th, we actually had a nice meteor enter our upper atmosphere down to the southwest. Unfortunately, it was so far south that it was behind the dome, so we didn't see it from this camera. However, the Global Fireball Observatory camera is mounted in a different location, and it was able to actually capture this, as shown here. This is a project that again is headed up by Dr. Peter Jeniskins of the NASA Ames Research Center and the SETI Institute. There is a link to the Global Fireball Observatory webpage below along with the American Meteor Society's webpage for this particular meteor. Let's go ahead and head into our weather station data. Looking at temperatures for the month of August, yeah, it continued to be nice and hot through the rest of August and into early September. It also did start to cool down a little bit after the first few days of September. However, it's still notably, well, hot for most people's standards out here. On the humidity side of things, of course, one of the things you really want to look for is the minimum humidity. The minimum humidity tends to fall at the hottest time of day, and so if you have a high minimum humidity at the hottest time of day, that will be likely rather uncomfortable. Now let's transition to our heat maps for the two months. When we're looking at these, the color in each individual box represents the temperature at that time on that day. So. What we see is that, again, our hottest time of day comes in the afternoon, close to around 3, while the coolest time of day 
tends to come right near sunrise at around 6 or 7. I will show two versions of each month's plot. One has a color mapping that goes from 0 degrees Celsius up to 50, roughly what we are used to ever experiencing here in the valley. And then there will be a color map that is actually scaled to the temperatures that were experienced in that month. That gives a little bit more contrast to help you see the difference between the temperatures then. And if you're not used to Celsius, I put a little reference down there in the lower right. It's worth knowing that every five degrees you go up in Celsius, you go up exactly nine degrees in Fahrenheit. it all back together to show our nice humidity versus temperature scatter plot. What you can see here is the most recent dates are the yellow dots there, the dates and times that is, and the green areas are a little bit further back. So what we can see is that we have begun to transition out of the really frustratingly hot and humid evenings uh, that come with August, and we're transitioning now into more what is typical out here in the desert. We are still getting days that are over 40 degrees Celsius out at the peak temperature, and that comes out to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, but the evening temperatures have been dropping significantly and have had also substantially lower humidity over the last few days, which is wonderful. We'll transition now into our solar telescope images. Again, these images are taken with an H-alpha filter, meaning that it filters out everything except a very specific wavelength of light called H-alpha after hydrogen alpha, a very specific transition of electrons inside hydrogen atoms, which emits a very red color of light. This allows us to see a lot of interesting features when they're there. Again, we're still in solar minimum, so the sun is rather quiet these days. Nevertheless, you might notice a few bits of variation here and there, some granular detail that have to do with convection currents in the upper atmosphere of the sun. Again, because of the wildfires, we actually had to miss a few days of imaging with the solar telescope for the sake of protecting that equipment. Nevertheless, we still got a lot of good days worth of imaging. Now we'll come back through all of these images with a different way of representing the data using what is called pseudo color. We will colorize this image in a way that pulls out a bit more contrast. You might be able to spot a little bit more detail at that point. Enjoy these views and I will touch base with you again as we wrap things up.
thank you for joining us for this edition of Systems Are Go. If you like this video, please let us know. We're always happy to hear your feedback. And if you'd like to be kept up to date about what's going on at the Library and Observatory, you can go to our website at the link below and sign up for our e-newsletter, which will give you all kinds of good information. Also, if you want to be kept up to date about what is published right here on this channel, you can subscribe right here on YouTube. Finally, a very special thank you to the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory Foundation. The foundation is what makes all of our programming and videos possible. So again, thank you. And everyone, keep on looking up.